Welcome to Our Power tonight. Hey. We're so excited to be with you. And as April's favorite phrase is, it's her favorite day of the week. <laughs> it's my favorite day. <laughs> I didn't want to miss that opportunity <laughs> to, oh, thank you, to thank say you. that. <laughs> we are so excited to be with you live tonight. We're going to sing songs. I, I tell you what, these songs are going to be such a blessing. And I am looking forward to hearing from you through your comments that you enjoyed worshiping with us. And that's one thing I wanted to ask you to do tonight is uh, if you're listening, it doesn't matter um, what you say. I would just like to hear from you mm, yeah. on our Facebook page, the or April's page, yeah. that, that you're listening. I would love to see what our listening audience looks like and or how many and that type of thing. Not that we're in a popularity contest, but I'd just like to know. And that's whether whether you're live or when if you watch it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. I would just like to know and... Uh, any comments you'd like to leave, all good ones, we yeah. really want to hear those. <laughs> Any bad know. ones, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> they, they, they tell us where you're from. Yeah. We might have people watching from other areas. Yes. We kind of That would help us to kind of get a feel of, of how the ministry is going and right. where it's going to. So just leave us a comment of some sort and, and let us know that you're watching either live or after it's recorded. So, we're going to start out with a wonderful song that talks about Jesus, what a wonderful child. Yes.
of the Lord that I feel yes. in my heart. Amen. Oh, I feel such peace and such joy. And I believe that it's reaching to even you. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Wherever you are right now, oh mercy. Jesus, we just simply yes. we simply give you glory. Yes. Amen. We simply say thank you, Father. We don't ever, ever want to take your presence for granted, Father. Amen. Oh, such thank a you. sweet spirit that I feel, Lord. I feel you down in every fiber of my being, yes. Father. I feel you. And yes. I love you. And yes. I adore you, yes. Jesus. Yes. Oh, mercy. Because you're worthy of it all. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes. we pray, God, we already know that your word is anointed, Father, but we ask you right now to be preparing hearts right now to receive your word. I pray that those hearts would be, you'd be tilling up the soil of their heart so your word would fall on good ground, oh mercy, and it would take root and it would produce a mighty harvest in the lives of everyone that has an ear to hear what you're saying, Father. Oh, in your mighty amen. name we pray. Praise you, Lord. Praise amen, you, Lord. amen, amen, amen. 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 <laughs> All right. Jesus. If you could come you, with Jesus. us to the round table. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I praise you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I magnify your wonderful holy, holy, holy name. Glory. Thank you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is certainly here with us tonight. Yes. And I want to thank these ladies who have been willing to come every week. Yes. It's not just the three of us. Miss Emily. Yes. Say hey, Miss Emily. Hey, y'all. <laughs> And our pastor's wife, Miss Lisa. Lisa. Say hey, Miss Lisa. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and, and Katie Bud, yes. uh, April's oldest daughter, who has been faithful to sing that beautiful, pure, high tenor <laughs> yes. while we sing. I am, um, I am in awe of the presence of the Lord. Yes. Oh. 
faith. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's real. Yes. I feel his presence so... I don't know. It's uh, well. There's no explanation, right. but you know it when you feel it. Uh, yes, and uh, it's it's powerful here tonight. I can tell you that. Um, mm. <clears throat> the Lord laid an interesting subject on my heart. I I really truly wanted to speak on something Christmassy, you know, because it's right around the corner. Uh, but I just couldn't uh, um, get a get a hold of anything. Yeah. I mean, I know about the birth, even though I sometimes don't know where Jesus was born. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's a joke. I do. I do love the Christmas story, but it just wasn't what the Lord put in my heart, and <clears throat> I found it kind of uh, ironic what He placed in my heart to speak on tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to title it. I, I want you, when you make a comment, to title what I speak about because I couldn't come up with a good title for it. Okay. <laughs> If you want to turn with me in your Bibles, uh, if you'll turn to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, yes. the 24th verse, beginning there, <clears throat> and I'll give you just a second to turn there or either get it on your phone, however you work it. But um, the scripture says, beginning with verse 24, it says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And then verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting or encouraging one another and so much the more as you mm -hmm. see the day approaching. Yes. Right, right. Amen. And <clears throat> tonight, I feel like the, the Lord wanted me to impress on all of us, me included, how important it is to stay close and to stay connected. Right. Yes, ma'am. Right. And right. especially <clears throat> in these days. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, historically, when I've heard uh, it preached or taught on these scriptures, it, it's about being faithful to attend church services, mm -hmm. primarily the, the 25th verse especially. Yeah. However, you know, coming to, the, to our house of worship now has radically changed. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so, and it's very limited, you know, at one time you were limited to how many could be in a building at one time and those kind of things. So it's very, it has changed tremendously. So you may ask, well, how can we fulfill the scripture mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. if, if we have limitations? Well, the Lord just, uh, and it's, it isn't anything that's going to uh, shake your world, but this is just a reminder right. of how we right. can stay close yes. and stay connected right. mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So there's so many ways. Matthew 18 and verse 20 says, Jesus, and Jesus spoke these words. He says, for where two or three mm -hmm. are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So meeting in small groups is a fulfillment of scripture. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and I'll just tell you, small groups, I, I've, I've had, I've been, I'm a church girl, okay? I've been going to church all my life multiple times a week mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know church is every, every, almost every night yeah week. yeah it's just it's my life mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> as the topic of small group sessions <clears throat> would come up periodically i'd have to ponder on that because i'm used to the whole shebang yeah. you know <laughs> the whole congregation the whole congregation <laughs> you know everything going on mm -hmm. but the lord really spoke to me through this mm -hmm. where two right. or three are gathered in my name He's in the well, like what happened yes. tonight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we only have six of us mm -hmm. here. And the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. he, he's, entered in. Yes. So. yes. I'm telling you powerfully. I'm telling you. Yes. But you, let me just say this. Anywhere where the Lord is, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's powerful. Yes. Yes. You know, we didn't it's do anything. Right. <laughs> but the presence of the Lord and the anointing of mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost moved in. And that's what he will do. Matthew 18, 20 says he will be in the midst. Oh, yes. Right. So even though things have been scaled back and we can't meet like we used to, but we can meet in small groups and the presence right. of the Lord will be there. Yes. Okay? Right. Right. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> another way to stay close and connected is made available to us by social media. Mm -hmm. And consider this, yeah. you know, right. hour of power since... Uh, 
things changed and we could not meet at our church like we had been doing for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had, we had been having weekly hour of power at our church uh, for what, eight, eight, seven or eight, years. Yeah, a long it out. Yeah, it's, been <laughs> yeah, a it's, been, it's been a long time. About eight or nine years. And then when restraints were put on that, we had a desire and Sister Dana headed it up we had to do something to keep the hour of power and to stay connected. Yes. And so April opened her home up and Sister Emily offered her services to do the camera work and mm -hmm. that type of thing. It just fell together and God has blessed it. And so social media, I don't know what all it was created for, but I know that it has blessed um, right. this program for it to go out yes right. and it goes out worldwide too mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. just here in Fort Payne or in the United States but I know for certain I had a comment from somebody in Venezuela one time mm -hmm. and our Ugandan friends listen so yes. it goes worldwide right. so uh, and another way to stay close <clears throat> is made uh, is let me get my uh, and I wanted to say this I, I'm so sorry that I stumbled a little bit, but I get carried away. <laughs> <clears throat> I wanted to mention two of my dear friends in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Stella, who works at the hotel Eureka, Eureka Place. Mm -hmm. She encourages me so much uh, on social media. And so does my dear, dear friend, Peace. Um, she, like this week, I've probably had three messages from her this mm -hmm. week. Don't want to know how I'm doing and giving me blessings and that type of thing. So social media is wonderful if it's used correctly. Yes, right. Amen. Then um, how about our phones? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How about how about calling somebody to talk about the goodness of Jesus? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how about FaceTime? You know that way you can even of course you got to yeah. fix your hair for that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> can't do but, it in the morning anymore. <laughs> So you have to choose the right time for the next time. <laughs> but, but just consider these things that are at our fingertips. Right, they're right. at our fingertips, and they're there for us to use, and we can use them for the glory of God. Okay, uh, another broader program that I don't know a lot about, but I know that more people can enter into, mm -hmm. is the Zoom program. Yeah. Am I saying it right? Yes, exactly. That program, mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. I need to learn. But I do know that it is available Mm -hmm. And you can have many people on that at right. one time. So there's just so many options yes. for us if we will choose to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. even though it's different than what we were raised to do, it's still a wonderful way to stay close, connected, yes. to hear the Word of God talk about His goodness and His mercy to us. So <clears throat> uh, other, other things that I want to talk about is what about drive-in services? We had that at our church mm -hmm. right. for several weeks. And oh my, what a blessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I tell oh, you, yeah. it was uh, awesome. when we moved into the activities building, I was kind of sad. Because <laughs> <laughs> I loved I loved the drive-in services. Mm -hmm. There was just something special there. Yes. But I, And I feel like that it, it was, was the presence. Yeah, yes. it was for that time. And the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord met with us open air. Mm -hmm. But it was just awesome. Yes. So the Lord was so good to us. Um, how about this? How about pulling into somebody's driveway and you can speak to them from your car to someone at their door? Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. have to make contact. You don't have to enter into their home. Mm -hmm. But you can pull up, maybe call them and tell them you're outside or somehow or other y'all see face to face and just do a shout out. I love you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do for you? You know, do you need mm -hmm. anything? There's right. so many options. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just think about how encouraging that is to somebody who's not able uh, because of um, using wisdom not to be close to anybody. Right. You know, and we have to use wisdom during this time, yes. without a doubt. And there are people maybe of certain ages or certain compromised uh, immune system that don't need to be around people. Mm -hmm. But if you can give them a shout out, yes. you know, if they can see right. your smiling face and that type of thing, it will mean so much to them. So I'm just so very thankful. I wanted to give a, a shout out to our church uh, family. 
I'm so thankful that Fort Payne Church of God, we're able to have our worship services on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. right. And um, this Wednesday night, we're going to have uh, worship on Wednesdays. And I'm so excited about that. Mm -hmm. Pastor's going to be talking. Uh, it's going to be on a, we're going to have a series of lessons right. from Pastor on the family. Yes. Exactly. And mm -hmm. it's going to be powerful. We begin at 630 and we invite you to come. We social distance, so you don't have to be afraid. We, yeah. We've got masks. We, mm -hmm. we sanitize between services, so we welcome you to come. Also, beginning Sunday night, our youth are going to have service on Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. Man, are we excited yes. about that. Yes. So, um, I know that there's some of you who are still not comfortable meeting together, and that's okay. But please, please stay close and connected. Mm -hmm. And fulfill wow. Hebrews twenty four, the Hebrews ten twenty four and twenty five, and I want to read it to you one more time because it might have a different you might have a different outlook on the mm -hmm. verses right. since we talked about yeah. the different types of uh, meetings that you can have to uh, worship together. And this time I want to put emphasis on verse twenty four. Mm -hmm. It says, "Let us consider one another." And that means let, let's think about somebody besides us. Right, let exactly. us consider another person. Yes. It says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Mm -hmm. let's, let's be so kind and gentle to other people that the desire to love mm -hmm. and to do goodness to somebody else will be, it'll inspire them. Yes. Okay? And then verse, verse 25, and I'm just I'm tore up about this. I I don't I know that uh, this may be as simple as simple can get, but when the Lord gave give this to me, it was given to me for a reason. Yes. And I'm I'm just really humbled that in a time that we are in, that He is encouraging us to still meet together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yes. Right. So verse twenty five says, "Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together." as the manner of some is, but exhorting, which means to encourage one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I read as, as much as I could about that, the day approaching, and Dana, I want you to help me. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that that's the, the last days that he's talking about there? Yes, the yes. return of the Lord. That's yes. what I thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I couldn't find it definitely, but that's exactly mm -hmm. what yeah. I thought. As we see the time of the Lord's return coming, we're encouraged mm -hmm. to provoke one another to love and to do good deeds yes. and to assemble ourselves together. And when you are together, we don't hug anymore, and I'm so sad about that. We hardly even touch anymore. But our spirits can hug one another. Absolutely. And, and I'm... And that's what I want to get over to you. It doesn't have to be a physical thing, but I can I can see my sister Emily sitting over there, and she's so attentive, and I can see that she's soaking this up. And that, y'all, that's like a warm blanket to Absolutely. me to know that somebody's receiving the word. So let's exhort and encourage one another, and because the coming of the Lord is so near. And that is what the Lord gave me, and I'd like for you to title it. If you'll just put some comments, because I didn't know whether to say stay close and connected or uh, assembling in troubled times. I didn't know what to call it. <laughs> but so I'd like to hear from you on that. And so whoever is next, have at it. Well, if I just wanted to comment. Okay. What kept coming to my mind as you were talking about that, you know, the Bible says that uh, our adversary is as a roaring mm -hmm. lion, uh -huh. seeking right. whom he may devour. And and I think about you know in the plains of Africa where lions roam, yes. when they're going to go hunting, you know they look for the ones that are separated exactly. from the from right. the group from right. the herd. Mm -hmm. The the herd will get in tight together, and those lions they can't penetrate when they're right. grouped together. Right. But he gets the ones that are weak and that are 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 by themselves. Right. And so spiritually, it is very important what Rhonda is is it's not just Rhonda, but it's the Lord speaking. Yes. It's yes. very important to stay mm -hmm. together, stay right. connected. Stay connected. Yes. Amen. yes. Amen. 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 Um, and that is so true, and and we have seen the effects of that. Those that that communion and that fellowship, 
together here in other areas at the church. I know Sunday we had a had a awesome service Sunday, and, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. And this is this is my this is my concern, and I'm sure the concern of different people. Yeah. In this time that we're in, that we could we could limit the Holy Spirit to move like He wants mm -hmm. to move freely, because of the the pandemic and yeah. the different things yeah. going on. But you know, the Holy Spirit. He's not limited by us, Come on. and he's not limited by the pandemic, no, and he's right. not limited by the circumstances. The Holy Spirit can move however he wants to move, and we, we had a, a mighty move of the Holy Spirit yes. Sunday, oh, and you wonderful. know, and we can pray for people. We can be careful how we pray, but right. we have people that, honestly, there's, and, and I just, I was just feeling, oh, I just want us to be able to have people come up in the altars and have people come up mm -hmm. for prayer. Because sometimes people just need someone to put their hand yes. on their back. And there's ways we can do this. Put on a mask and we can come and mm. behind them and, and put our hand on them and pray for them. Yeah. And they can hear with the mask. They can hear yes. what we're praying yes. over them. They can hear what, what's taking place. And, and God, can, God can, can lead people to certain people that need prayer that... The Lord leads you to them because Amen. they need that. They need to hear what the Lord's saying yes. to them Amen. right then. Yes. So, so let's just be. It's so important that we don't limit what God right. wants to mm -hmm. do, and, and He He's not limit. He's limitless. So right. it, it, the pandemic doesn't throw God at all. Exactly. Okay, exactly. And, and, it, and and so we need to allow Him to move, and mm. I'm excited about that. Amen. Yes. You know, the Lord just laid on my heart to to share. He kind of confirmed it in different ways, but. I told April I'm kind of sharing something about going into the new year, and it's it's um, something that God had put in my heart. Um, that and I want to read this one scripture just to start off in it, and and th this will help lead into what I wanted to share. And it says in First Corinthians 15 and 58, if you want to turn there, First Corinthians 15 and 58, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, right. unmovable, yes. always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes. That verse says to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It, it doesn't sound like, to me, does it sound like to you when I read that verse, that we're supposed to pull back any right now? No. No. Does it sound like we're, we're mm -hmm. supposed to take a little hi hiatus mm -hmm. and we're supposed to take a little break right. from the ministry and from the work of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Oh, the pandemic's here. We've got to slow down or our uh, the election, all this that's going on. We're going to have to just kind of hide in our house and see what happens out there the next day. It sounds like to me that, that the Lord is saying we need to be continue to be steadfast unmovable, yes. always abounding. Amen, amen. And you know, in these in these days, we've talked about the last days um, that we need to be together mm -hmm. in communion. In these last days, we we've got to remember that the enemy is on a rampage. He is he is out to 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 get us to where we are not being steadfast, right. to where we're not right. being faithful, to where we're not abounding in God's work. And I found three ways that he does this, and I'm going to compare it to the parable. Of the seeds in Matthew, yeah. they talk about the seed, the sower that comes and sows the seeds mm -hmm. in Matthew chapter 18, and you can read that in your own time. But I'm going to compare that to it. There's three things, and I feel really like these three things pretty much kind of sum up what the enemy tries to do mm -hmm. to to get us to a place of where we're not steadfast in him. The first one that he does, and first let me read this: steadfast means the definition, resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. Mm -hmm. And I looked up some synonyms, synonyms about steadfast, and I love these words. Listen to these words. And I want us to think about it as I read them. Think about, oh, I want to I want to be that. Yeah. Through God, right. mm -hmm. what he does through me. Loyal, mm -hmm. faithful, yes. committed, devoted, dedicated, dependable, Reliable, steady, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. true, constant, staunch, solid, and trusty. Mm -hmm. Aren't those great words? Oh, yes. It, that, those are great attributes. Yes, amen. Great characteristics that, that we would want in our life to be steadfast women or men of God. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he wants to do. 
But the three things the enemy will do, and I want to I want to bring them out because I'm trying to lead us into the new year because I really feel that these are things that the enemy will do to try to to trip us up from being that that woman of God, that man of God, that teenager that he wants us to be. The first thing is distraction. Mm -hmm. And that is the seed that's thrown among the thorns. Yes. And it says in Mark 4 and 19, And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for the things enter in, and what do they do? They choke mm -hmm. the word, and it becomes unfruitful. The enemy wants to try to distract us by all these things around us. Mm -hmm. And what are some of those things? Money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What else? Not enough money. Not enough money. Yeah. yeah. Worrying about not enough uh -huh. money. We've got jobs. Our families. Yes, our families. Exactly. Uh, Tending to our families. Our, our uh, possessions, our, mm -hmm. our uh, children, our entertainment. Mm -hmm. We can even uh, we can even get overloaded even with ministry and all of these things. Exactly. Things just pile up and pile up and you're just doing too mm -hmm. much and you can't do it, one thing effectively right. trying to do so many things he right. could distract us yes. literally distract us with ministry mm -hmm. what we call mm -hmm. ministry and we may be like april say and we may be like spinning our wheels like a hamster in a in a wheel and we're we're doing ministry but we're not getting anywhere mm -hmm. you know what i mean yes. because we're not being we're not allowing the holy spirit to lead us to the specific ministries that he has yeah. And the effectiveness of those that mm -hmm. he wants to do in our life. So yeah. the enemy wants to distract us, and and he wants to distract us from God's true purpose exactly. in our life. Yes. Lies. He loves yeah. to distract with lies. Lies, and that, and and the, what is God's true purpose? If we could sum it up, what is God's purpose for our life? For mine, yours, to be, to be steadfast in our relationship with Him. To worship him, to mm -hmm. serve him, and and to be and and that relationship will guide us to what? What what is our purpose on this earth? To be ambassadors. Yes. 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 To be representatives. Yes. To Je of Jesus Christ. Yes. To, right. to reach others for Jesus. Yes. Prayer. That distraction. Prayer is the is the key. That's it. Prayer is the key that will keep us from getting distracted. Yes. yes. If we will spend time in prayer, it keeps our focus. To where it needs to be. Yes. And the second way that the enemy wants to come against us is what April just mentioned, deception. Oops, sorry. You remember these <laughs> easy. They're easy because they're all D words. We're, 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 they're all D words, okay? So we had distractions and now we have deception. Mm -hmm. And that's the thorn, the, the seeds that were thrown by the wayside. Yeah. They're thrown by the wayside. And there's a scripture in Matthew 24, 24. For false cry, Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Yeah. The enemy wants us to believe his lies, as April said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's not going to come to somebody like April, and he's not going to throw a bold-faced lie in her mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. He's not going to do that. Right. He's not. He, he's strategic. He's not going exactly. to come to April and, and throw some bold-faced lie mm -hmm. To April, he's going to come to April with seeds of doubt. He loves to, per he knows the word. He uh -huh. knows the truth and he right. perverts it ever mm -hmm. so slightly. Twist it, yeah. uh, pervert it, mm -hmm. leave parts out of it, mm -hmm. and he will try to place seeds of doubt in mm -hmm. your heart and in your mind. Yes. And then those seeds begin to grow mm -hmm. and become greater and greater deception in mm -hmm. your life if, you're, if they're not dealt with. How do we deal with deception in our life? It's right here. Yeah. We got it, it right here. The word this is God. the key, the Word of God. We got to eat it up. Yeah. And the, I encourage people this year, prayer keeps you from being distracted. The Word will keep you from being deceived. I encourage people, get in the Word like you've never been in the Word. We're going to need to be in the Word. It, it, it needs to be like our diet. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, we think, we think, and for some reason in America, we think we got to eat three meals a day. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to have breakfast, we got to have lunch, and we got to have dinner. Mm -hmm. Well, we need this word. Yes. We need this word like we need food. We need to eat it up every day and just take it in because that's what will keep us from being deceived. You, you have two entities. You, you have the spirit man and you have the human flesh part, man. the flesh yeah. man. And whatever you feed is going to mm -hmm. grow the most and take and will take over. Mm -hmm. that, so that will you, determine your yes. course. So if, you're, if you feed the spirit man through the word, 
and through prayer, mm -hmm. then the spirit man will get stronger and stronger and stronger, yes. and the flesh will get weaker mm -hmm. and weaker and weaker. It's a choice we make. Right. Absolutely. And I just want to encourage, we're talking about being steadfast. I want to encourage us to, to be steadfast, women and men of God, that right. we're in prayer, we're in the Word. The third way he's going to try to attack us, and, and I've seen this, we've seen this very evident this year, is discouragement. Mm -hmm. Another D word, discouragement. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, if you look all around, there's people discouraged mm -hmm. about, and I'll admit, I've, I've been discouraged some this year. I've had to work on this area myself. God even worked with me this week to give me a, he gave me an insight that I had not had. And, you know, this year I retired, and I, like I shared in one of the, the uh, hour of powers. I talked about the pandemic, <laughs> and uh, they haven't they haven't let me forget that one. Okay, it's pan pandemic, not panademic. But I was emphasizing it. But anyway, I shared about you know here I retired, and then all this has happened with this pandemic, and I had all these travels planned, and I had all this you know all ministries planned and mission trip planned. I, I had all this. They, and, and you know, so I have battled discouragement yeah. this year. I have, but the Lord just spoke to me in some different ways just this week, and and uh, you know, He was speaking to me about that, and I heard a whole sermon on it yesterday from my pastor from Germany was on Facebook, and I pulled it up and listened to the sermon. It was like God was using that man of God to speak mm -hmm. to me about the, the process. And God was speaking to me, and he was telling me, you are in a process. I've got you in this process. And, you know, not to grudge against or be discouraged or be upset about the place that you're in right now because mm -hmm. you, you're in a process. Yes. And he's bringing you into something. Exactly. He's getting you prepared, but mm -hmm. you, you can't fight the process. Yeah. You've got to allow the process to take place. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he wants to discourage us. There's a scripture... Um, in Psalms 143, and I love the scripture. It says, Therefore my spirit is overwhelmed within me, my heart within me. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, mm -hmm. lead me to the rock that is yes. higher <laughs> than I. The <laughs> enemy wants to discourage us, but God is saying, Ooh, I'm the rock that's mm -hmm. higher uh -huh. than all of the discouragement that can come your way. So we have to learn to trust God in the midst of the circumstances that we're in because yes. nothing catches God by surprise. Right. I mean, you know, we some people have been real tore up about this election and you know, I'm telling you God's not thrown off by what's going on with the election. Mm -hmm. God is not thrown off about that. He knows the beginning and the end. Amen. He knows everything yes. in between. And so we need to take heart and not be discouraged no matter what is going on in our life. I want to share this. I've shared it with the women before and I just love it. It's, it's from John Wesley's diary. This man got an insight from God mm -hmm. and led him to lead, uh, he was from the Church of England, to lead into a revival to take place all over and, and for many to be saved and, and, and this revival to take place because he was stepping out of the, the norm yeah. and, and embracing more that God had. And, and but but he was against a lot of obstacles okay mm -hmm. yes. I want to hear you to hear this when you're talking about somebody being steadfast listen to this this is his diary Sunday morning May 5th I preached in St. Anne's was asked to not come back anymore Sunday evening May 5th I preached at St. John's and the deacon said get out and stay out <laughs> Sunday morning May 12th I preached at St. Jude's. Can't go back there either. Sunday night, May 12th, I preached at St. George's and I was kicked out again. Sunday morning, May 19th, I preached. The deacons called a special meeting and said I couldn't return. Sunday night, May 19th, I preached on the street. I was kicked off the street. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning, May 26th, I preached in the meadow. I, ch I was chased out of the meadow as a bull was turned loose during the service. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sunday morning, June 2nd, I preached at the edge of town. I was kicked off the highway. Mm. Sunday, June 2nd, afternoon service. I preached in a pasture. 10,000 people came to hear me. Praise the Lord. 
pain. That is steadfastness. Yes. Wow. That is steadfastness. That is not giving up. Mm -hmm. That is continuing. That is pressing on. That is moving forward, reaching forward. That's, beautiful. That's the way that the Lord wants us to be. He wants mm -hmm. us to be steadfast, Wonderful. unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In Colossians 1.23, it says, If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Yes. Mark 10, 22, or Matthew 10, 22 says, He that endureth to the end, what? Shall be, Shall be saved. saved. Yes. And mm -hmm. Hebrews 3, 14, for we are, 3, 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence, what? Steadfast mm -hmm. unto the oh, end. Yeah. Steadfast unto the end. And I love this verse in Acts 20, 24. But none, and this is what this is where we gotta get. Yes. We gotta get this way, okay? The pandemic, election, uh, you know, all you hear all these stories about things that are gonna take place in the world, you know, all these horror stories about uh, what's gonna happen in our in our in the United States of America and elsewhere. It says this, but none of these things move me, neither I, do I count my life dear unto myself, so that I may what finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Yes. So we need to uh, we need to dig our feet in. Yeah. I tell you, uh, and just none of these things move me. And I want to say something that D.L. Moody said. I wrote this little quote down. He said this. He said, "God is in the search for what." He is not looking for high IQs, talents, clever speakers, or people of influence. He is looking for a steadfast man or woman of God. Hmm. You think about that. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And David said Sol to Solomon this. King David said to Solomon, his son, this. Serve the Lord with wholehearted devotion, with a willing mind, for the Lord searches every heart. And I'm saying in these last days, just like David told Solomon, mm -hmm. we need to have that that devoted heart, that steadfast mm -hmm. heart, yeah. that that unmovable heart, yes. that none of these things are going to move me. Mm -hmm. And I am going to move forward in 2021. I'm going to move forward in my relationship with the Lord and finding my purpose and <coughs> mm -hmm. the ministry that he's called me to. I'm going to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to allow any of these things that the enemy would put upon me to distract me, to deceive me, to discourage me. Yeah. I am going to be a steadfast. Let's 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 determine to be steadfast men and women of God. Amen. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Charles and I have been married uh, forty-eight and a half years, mm -hmm. and um, that there is no option. Right there, you go. But mm -hmm. we're going to be together. Exactly. I mean, until death do us part, mm -hmm. and that's the same steadfastness that we have to have. Yeah. I mean, there'll be bumps in the road. I'm not, you know. Right. We've all had those. Yeah, yeah, we've had those times where we disagreed and mm -hmm. probably let people know we disagreed. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm not trying to be funny. I, I do try, but it don't work out much. But that's the kind of attitude you've got when you enter into this relationship with the mm -hmm. Lord. No matter what comes or goes, you are loyal and true to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And his purpose for your life. There's no other option. Amen. And yes. if you can have that attitude, then you'll make it. Amen. You will make it if mm -hmm. you enter into that relationship mm -hmm. with no option that we're going to make it. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Well, glory. Um, we, Jesus. this uh, tonight is going to be the last hour of power for 2020. Yeah. Um, I, we're a little sad about it, but we're taking the time these, these next few weeks mm -hmm. and we are going to be in much prayer about what the future of our power looks like. So you be praying right. with us too. Yes. Really, yes. Yes. Um, we thank God for, for what he's done this year in 2020. Who would have ever thought in a million years that mm -hmm. we'd be sitting here going live and, and all Amen. the people right. that, that God right. has touched. Who would ever mm -hmm. thought? Right. Except God. He knew all about it. He knew. 
but we never want to be doing anything just to be doing it. We want to be right in the perfect will of God. And so we're praying for that. Yes. So I knew that this was going to be the last one for the year. So I was praying about, you know, I was just looking over this year and and looking uh, looking at this past year and looking at the year that's before us. And right. I really had another subject. I was really kind of fired up about talking about that subject. But this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, God changes he changed, <laughs> it, changed it, changed it, changed it. And it's a it's another specific word All right. <laughs> for somebody. Mm -hmm. And he told me to tell somebody that you have been stuck. Just mm -hmm. like if you if you're driving a car, uh, uh, have you ever needed to like get going in a hurry and you think you have it in drive, but it's in neutral, and you mash that mm -hmm. gas pedal, you don't go one place. Right. You stay right Where's in the up? same place and go anywhere. Tire, it's, you ain't going uh, anywhere. And the Lord said that somebody has been stuck in this neutral position for far too long. Mm -hmm. And he said that it's time to put that joker in drive All in right. advance. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he gave me, and I thought, Lord, okay, I won't tell him that. But then he started giving me these points. Uh, there's some of you that's been stuck in, in the wilderness, is what I'm calling it. And you've been mm -hmm. stuck. You've been surrounded by these problems. Uh, you've been surrounded and been stuck in this state of sick, being sick. Uh, you've been stuck in a state of depression and it's like you've wanted to you, you're mashing that gas pedal wanting to get out of that but it's just you've been stuck in it mm -hmm. and um, I remember the story about the man that had an infirmity for 38 years and mm -hmm. he was sitting by the pool of Bethesda and it said yeah. the angels would come and trouble that water so, and yeah. the first one in they would get their miracle but this man was sitting there for 38 years he had this infirmity and Jesus well he came by one day <laughs> he came by one day and Jesus knelt down to that man and he asked him a question wilt thou be made holy uh -huh. <laughs> and the man looking at the son of God eye to eye looking at him said I don't have anybody to take me to put me in the in the pool. And uh you know, I think for me, thirty-eight years stuck in that place. Mm -hmm. If if he talked, you know, he could move his mouth. You know, I could I could wiggle or I could inch my way. However, thirty eight years I could get somewhere, it looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with that if it, yeah. if I could wiggle or something. Could, yeah. But Jesus said, Without be made whole. And he gave him that excuse. And then Jesus said this thing, get up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he right. said, right. Now, Jesus is so full of compassion and so full of love. And he said he could have said, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. You've been here so long. But he didn't do that. Right. He said, get up. Right. And I'm telling you, if you've been in that place of, of whatever, of right. problems in your mind, it's really your thinking that has kept you in this right. place. Uh, it's your words that you've been speaking have kept you in this neutral position. Position. But God, I'm telling you, he's telling you tonight, he's going to advance you, to get you out of that situation. And I thought about that story uh, that's in uh, 2 Kings chapter 7 about these four lepers. And there yes. was a famine in the land. <laughs> <laughs> and I love what they said. One guy said, why should we sit here till right, we die? Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. if we, there's a famine in the city. If we mm -hmm. go in there, they could kill us. And if wherever we go, they could kill us. But why sit here till we die? Yeah. It's so why, I'm nothing. asking you. Yeah. Why <laughs> sit there until you die? Exactly. Why sit in that same position that you've been in for years? I don't know how long you've been in it. But right. why sit there till you die? Right. It's time to advance. Yes. It's time to shift those gears Amen. and get going. Right. Get up. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to tell somebody, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. Amen. Jesus has been with you all the way. He's taking you through these times to refine you. Right. He's, he's purifying you as mm. pure gold even. Mm -hmm. And the reason that he's doing that, just like Dana said, our purpose on this earth is to be an ambassador for, right. for Christ. Our Absolutely. purpose right. is to represent Jesus mm. and to, to make a difference for the kingdom of God. Right. Our, and I right. thought about this scripture. I, uh, uh, this was already on my heart. I was preparing this. Uh, even this afternoon, I was kind of crunching and kind of going back and forth. And I wanted to make sure it was God. And I got a text message just as I was uh, going over this scripture. And somebody, actually it was your brother, sent me a text message. He said, have you ever studied about this verse? And it was what I was on. I said, well, let me read this to you. 
Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Listen. Mm -hmm. Who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that mm -hmm. we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. <laughs> by the comfort therewith we ourselves are comforted mm -hmm. by God so us in our tribulation it's for a purpose you're right. not staying there forever it's right. just a temporary thing that you're coming through and you're shifting those gears going to the next level but you're going through those things because he's he is comforting you in those times so that you, you can, can comfort right. other people exactly. Exactly. now I, I remember the one of the darkest times in my life when I, my marriage was crumbling and I was so heartbroken and it was a rough time for me but I remember one special special person that came to me in that time in my life and she had been passed through the same thing that I was going through mm -hmm. and I can't tell you what a difference those conversations meant right, to me that I right, had with that exactly. person I, I'm, I'm convinced I know it was God that brought me out of that but mm -hmm. he used that person right, that right. had already been through mm -hmm. all of that heartache suffered that same uh, all that same hurt that I had suffered, oh, it's, that mm. was such comfort to me, and right. it helped me. Right. So the reason you're passing through that, you're not going to be stuck in it mm. anymore. You're coming through that right. to help somebody else. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. It came exactly. to pass. It came to pass. Yeah. <laughs> it came to and April, I was going to say, you know, you look at so many people that God has used mightily, mm. you know, in ministry of women that are preaching or teaching or, uh, you know, reaching out in men. Many of them have, they've been through those hurts, yes. like you said. They, they had to be comforted. Mm. But through all that, God has, has, has refined yeah, them in a way exactly. that, that mm -hmm. you know, their ministry is powerful Absolutely. and anointed. Yes. Because, you know, for one thing, they're humbled, I believe. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mm -hmm. believe that we're humbled. You know, we're humbled when we re realize that we're just but flesh and blood yes. and that, that mm -hmm. we need... We need God. Amen. You know? Mm -hmm. And that, that puts us in a place that we can more fully minister for the Lord, that He can more fully use us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And I, you know, all, I, now I know situations are hard. Don't get me wrong. I know. Exactly. Man, yeah. I've, I've felt the heartache yes. and I felt pain, cried many a tear. Yes. I, it's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember those scriptures. It says that when you pass through the waters and when yes. you pass through Amen. the rivers, they won't overtake right. you. And even when you go through the fire, it won't, the flame won't kindle yeah. upon you. <laughs> right. all, of, all those promises that he's given us, those things, oh, such strength, oh, mercy. That's oh, it's such strength that it gives you that to know that you're going to. It's just a temporary thing that God's with you. It's not going. It's just He's using it for your good. Okay. Amen. Um, this one He told me to tell you that you have been stuck in a place and you have been sitting on your talents that God gave you. Wow. Now talents could talents. What He showed me, talent is not necessarily your gift things. Your maybe playing the piano or whatever. Talents basically is a gift, any gift that God has given you. He's given you a car, your house, your money. Uh, he has given you giftings, callings. Anything that God has given you is a talent. Mm -hmm. And I remember that parable about the master that gave one five talents, one mm -hmm. two, and gave him one. The one that had five, he went out and doubled it. The one that had two, he doubled it. But the one he had one, mm -hmm. he said he buried it. Right. To keep mm -hmm. it safe. Hey, he buried right. it, and and I, I'm talking to someone. I know I am. Mm. You have such talent, such giftings that God has given you, whether it be your money, finances, whatever it may be. Only you know what what I'm talking about. But you have buried that thing way down deep, and you've just been waiting, mm -hmm. and you've been stuck in this place, and the the potential that mm -hmm. you're sitting on if you only knew the potential that that God wants to you if you only realize the impact in this world exactly. that it would have right. I, God told me to tell you to dig it up <laughs> dig it up All right. you've been sitting yeah. on it too long mm -hmm. I don't know what you've been waiting on maybe you're maybe you're fearful maybe you're um, I don't know what what you've been waiting on but God told me to tell you to dig it up it's time to use it it's time to go forward right hallelujah this is the last thing. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Uh, there I been mentioned something on please. the talent. Uh, yes. Because I just felt this kind of come to me. Some people, I think, are afraid to step out with their 
that gifting or that talent because they're they're wanting they're waiting for you to tell me mm. how I am in that uh -huh. gifting or talent and we got to realize that it's God that the the gift and the talent is is for God and don't worry about what exactly. this one says or what that one says about it leave it between you and God mm -hmm. that you're going to walk in this gift and this talent that he's given to you for the glory of God yes because we can't we can't depend on other people because honestly uh, sometimes people's motives and hearts and mm -hmm. everything are not where they need to be exactly we can't seek approval of man amen mm -hmm. right you know that you're you're wrong if you're seeking mm -hmm. the approval of man I, I know that's blunt it's true but it's mm -hmm. true yeah. that ki that kind of attitude and it happens a lot where mm -hmm. people oh, yeah. are yeah. they're just seeking man's approval and that mm -hmm. when it's, and I've seen it when people give them some kind of affirmation or approval which you know we need we need affirmation don't get me wrong yeah. but people just feed on that and they just won't mm -hmm. they and then the opposite can be true where someone someone does something on a negative note, mm, exactly, and then that person shrinks back, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and that's yeah. where they're shrinking back, yeah. and they're hiding that gift. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's I'm not good enough. Oh, it, yes. you know, it was well. They they didn't need to be listening to that person Amen. anyway. Right. It's between them and God. Amen. That's true. And another thing, maybe uh, this just came to be. Maybe you're sitting on that on that on your talent buried because you're looking at everybody else's talent and you're comparing exactly. yours yeah. with theirs. Yeah. Don't compare mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> God, I'm telling you, I'm telling you again, if you only realize the impact of the talent that God has yes. on the inside Amen. of you, if you only realize the impact it's going to have on this world, if you are genuinely using your talent the way God gave you, not comparing it, not trying right. to be somebody else. Right. You just use what God's given you. Right. This is the last point. I'm excited about it. <laughs> this is in Joshua chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. Now listen to this. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. Mm -hmm. And Joshua yeah. said unto the children of Israel, How long... Are you slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers have given you? How long are you slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers have given you? Right, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of you, maybe you've been watching this hour of power. We've been doing going live since March, February. February. Yeah, we even started in February. Yeah. Some of y'all have been watching these hour powers, and 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 you have been thinking to yourself, I think there's more to this to this Christian life than mm -hmm. what I thought. <laughs> All right. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you. There is more. Right. God has such an yes. inheritance for you. Yes, there, the Bible talks about the fullness Praise of God God's and mercy. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Thank you, Jesus. And maybe you've questioned oh, it, and maybe you hallelujah. maybe you've been a little bit afraid. Well, I don't know, uh, my friend. I just want to tell you that I've been in your shoes. I, I've been uh, at a when I was younger. We were. Uh, raised Baptist and and my parents I was still just a young girl but my parents started feeling there was just more right, what, there more. was more mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing it was up till I was I was grown I realized I was in that I was a little afraid I thought oh you know I, I don't mm -hmm. know about going into those deeper waters that Ezekiel 47 mm -hmm. talks about but I tell you I'll never ever regret exactly. it for one second of my exactly. life it absolutely changed my life and I'm telling you friends <laughs> There is a great inheritance that is away. And I'm asking you, how long are you going to be right. slack? How long are you going to wait before you go possess the land? Before mm -hmm. you possess the promise? Before you possess the fullness? Mm -hmm. Jesus died and already paid the price. You have access by the blood of Jesus. The second you receive salvation, you've got access to all of these things. Hallelujah. The fullness, yes. the promise, yes. oh mercy, the inheritance of God. Amen. Um, so it's your time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said it's time he wants to advance you. So I'm asking you just to jump in with mm -hmm. all I meant. Feet first. Jump into mm -hmm. everything that God has for you and you yes. will never ever regret it. Amen.
Amen. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen. 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 Love it. Step out in the waters. Yes. yes. Go, Go out a little bit deeper. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we surely, surely want to pray for you before we go. Amen. We love you so very much, and, and I would ask you again to help us be in prayer. We, mm -hmm. we want to be so in the perfect will of God. We want to do exactly what he wants us right. to do. Right. So we're going to be in much prayer about this new coming year. But we just we just rejoice in what God has done in your lives. Amen. Um, Amen. And what he's doing in your lives. I know he's, he's up to, to big things in your life, and we love you. Um, and so we want to pray before we go. Dana, do you want to you uh, want to lead us? But let's just we won't touch hands, but let's all touch. Oh, okay. touch yes, the touch word as we pray. Yes. Oh, oh Father, Hallelujah. we just come to you and we thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus. mercy. First and foremost, we thank you for the opportunity. Oh, Father, that we have to have our power live, Father, to be able to have our power through this medium, Father. We thank you for that, We thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lord, I pray that I would never get to a place where I thank you for all that you have done, Lord. Father, through the Our Power Ministry and all that you will do, Lord Jesus, that I will not. For allow my soul to be a to part of the Lord. Lord, I would not be Lord, Lord, I get this get this Lord, 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 L